want. I feel in great. Hello and welcome back to the Light of Knowledge. We're very pleased to bring to you today a short special on the power of silence. Rumi, the great Sufi mystic, has said, Be silent. Only the hand of God will remove the burden of your heart. What is silence? To some of us, silence can be frightening. And yet others, it could be healing. Today we are going to understand the deeper meaning of silence. Is silence really helpful to us in our life? Why do we need silence? And to help us answer these questions and also guide us into an experience of silence, we have with us today Sister Goody from Germany. Sister Goody has been on the path of spiritual knowledge as taught at Brahma Kumaris for the past 33 years. She's a graduate in linguistics with a major in communication. And of those 33 years, she has spent 30 years dedicated to a project on silence. She's also a member of the Board of Scientific Advisors at Neutrino International Group of Scientists as a representative of the Science of Silence. Sister Goody, welcome to the show and uh, welcome to the Godlywood studio. Om Shanti, I'm happy to be here. We are very pleased to have you with us in our Godlywood studio today. And um, Sister, I'd like to uh, start off by asking, Sister Goody, that's the name, it does not have a German ring to it. <laughs> so we're kind of wondering, you know, where does this name come from? Our now director of the International Brahma Kumaris Organization, Dadi Janki, 33 years ago, she met me when I was still unexperienced on this path. And she said, your name Gudrun, which was the German original name, does not fit to you. You are Goody. And this means a marionette mm. at the string of God. Um, you were in Germany when you came into this knowledge. So could you please um, explain to us a little bit and what was this experience like when you got this knowledge? The basis of this knowledge is an energy that is called God in all religions. But none of these religions that exist now really understand and experience this energy. When I was not yet connected with the Brahma Kumaris in Germany, I was looking for the reason why I continued thinking something completely new is happening. I felt that a completely new world would start and only a few around me would be able to understand this. So you had this experience before you got the knowledge? Yes. There were, even in my childhood, there were very deep incidents in which I understood that I would be combined with a tiny dot of unlimited light. We are all seekers, and each one of us has a different reason. Mm. What was your motivation to seek God? There was actually no obvious external motivation. The motivation came from deep inside. There was the feeling, this world is not real. This world is not for, for what I'm meant for. And I did not feel home in it. When you say you didn't feel home, was it being in Germany that you were not comfortable with, or this whole universe, you know, being born and being in this world? Was that the meaning of not being comfortable? Being in this old world. Okay. okay. It was not dependent on a country. 
Okay. It was the consciousness, the limited body consciousness surrounding me that I was discontent with. That is so deep because, mm. um, and you're saying this was happening right from childhood? From the age of five. Wow, wow, that is intense. Um, so finally you connected with the Supreme. And uh, what was your experience after you connected? In that incident at the age of five, I felt that consciousness would be in here between the two parts of the brain and touched by another source of energy, I felt that my consciousness would become completely unlimited. And I said to myself silently, I will conquer all these limits. And I had the feeling afterwards when I thought about, about it as an adult, I had the feeling there must have been some precondition that gave me these insights because I was looking for a task. What is my task? What do I have to do in this ugly world? And I observed the people, they were completely different from what I felt would be virtuous. Mm -hmm or ethically righteous, and I felt alone. And this being alone made me connect with that supreme source of energy even more. And after my studies, after my mundane studies, I was searching in different paths, religious gurus were, taught, were teaching me. I was looking in all countries, in all cultures, but none of them would really satisfy my feeling what, be, what would be the need of time. And I silently sat in meditation at the Black Forest in Germany, where I was living at kind of a monastery that did research on the context of mental power and nuclear power, connected with silent Zen Buddhism. And I sat there and said to myself, I'm ready for what is really meant for me. I want to know the highest and purest path that exists. And I spread this thought into the atmosphere in my meditation. And instantly, an angelic voice replied silently and said clearly audible, go to the Brahma Kumaris. And I never had heard these words before. So I asked a friend, what is this? And she said, well, that's, a, that's an organization that exists also in Germany and she gave me the address. When I went there, they told me that they would meditate from the soul to the supreme soul linked with a ray of light and I recognized that this would exactly be the experience that I had a few years before that. I had been sitting in meditation, feeling I am kind of an atom, a brilliant atom in here, linked with another atom that would make me extremely happy. And I started saying Shiva, 
and singing Shiva without knowing who that really was. So I felt somehow home with what they were telling me at the Brahma Kumari Center and he invited me to stay and to come with them to Mount Abu to get deeper insights. That's very beautiful. I mean, I um, think it's a very beautiful journey you had. Um, right from the point you started out as a seeker to the stage where you're at right now, where I can say you're a master of silence, um, were there any significant milestones on the journey? The immaterial energy that is teaching at the Brahma Kumaris in Mount Abu is God. That was the first obstacle <laughs> that was removed. The second one was that the link with that one energy would show me who I really am and show me a task that would solve all the riddles that I thought I won't be able to solve them before I entered this path. We spent years, you know, trying to get connected to the Supreme. But in your case, it sounds like um, there was an immediate connection with the Supreme. And um, that's very um, heartening to know that uh, it can happen this way. It doesn't necessarily have to be a lot of hard work. Um, when you have that love for God, if I may, maybe that connection comes mm -hmm. uh, right away. Um, you've also been living here um, at Mount Abu for the past 18 years. Yes. Uh, what has your experience been in terms of uh, taking yourself maybe further spiritually? Because no matter what, living in Germany and going through these experiences mm -hmm. and coming to the land of God and going through these experiences, was there any significant difference between the two? I was taught to forget all limited consciousness, to forget all limited countries, any belonging to a country or to a culture of now, to just forget this and let go. And I understood that the significance of this place of God would be this consciousness to be completely free from any limited attachment. I was taught to let go of this body while being in it or connected with it. I was taught and got experience of being deeply linked with the Supreme who never got any limited consciousness and to acquire his consciousness or her consciousness and to really start a life that is completely out of all existing human systems. Um, you just referred to the consciousness as either his or her. Um, can we develop um, any kind of relationship with the Supreme or is that how you have developed or is, is there any special, particular kind of relationship that you have with the Supreme? My deepest relationship with the One Supreme Energy is the Timeless Sadguru. Timeless Sadguru is someone who is going to take you on your journey till the very end. He's going to be with you and he's going to take you all the way. That's very nice. Um, you also earlier referred to him as the one. Yes. In our life, we are always looking on a physical level, you know, in this materialistic mm. world. We're always looking for that perfect someone to come along and fulfill us, to complete us. But if you were able to establish a relationship with the Supreme and look at him or her as the one, did that happen overnight or was there a lot of work involved in it? The seed was given instantly and the recognition that it is really like that and then that no one 
would be able to replace that one that was a bit of a process, but a short process. Um, that's good. Um, that gives us hope, you know. All of us who are seeking out here, um, mm. it gives us a lot of hope that it can happen pretty fast. Um, I'd also like to know about your experience here in terms of when you were in Germany, what kind of perspective did you have about India at the time when you had never been to India? What aspect did you look at India from? There was kind of a longing and a knowing there is a land in which I'm completely home. But it was not nowadays India. When I landed in Delhi for the first time of my life, on my journey to the Brahma Kumaris at Mount Abu, I started crying out of love. Right away, as soon as you landed, you knew that this was the place to be. Completely home. How wonderful, how wonderful. Um, your 18 years here in India, has that perspective changed in any way? Has it gotten better or has it gotten worse or has there been any change to that? <laughs> My internal life has become completely different. Um, my reaching out, showing the one to those who want to know who he is has become much, much stronger than before when I was in Germany. And scientists are beginning to recognize who this one energy is. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the one making me an instrument to show them, look, in this way, the world is going to change and it is about to change. And sciences are also about to change. And this one is the only one who can represent consciousness mm -hmm. as it is needed in these days in order to really change and create life in all disciplines existing that is completely free from the slightest bit of violence. Sister, it's always said that uh, the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. <laughs> and um, here, Bharat, you know, India, which is a land of yoga. Unfortunately, that's my observation that people have forgotten the value or the importance of yoga. And the West is picking up on that. The East is running after the West in terms of its affluence and its materialistic influences. Whereas the West is now looking up to the East for its spiritual influences. Um, in your experience, who has lived in both cultures, um, did you come across any uh, experiences or any situations where you felt that this was really happening? I feel that people on both sides are looking for the one unlimited new world. They start very powerfully and in a very determined way to search for an energy that would be able to liberate them from any kind of limited perception. Because they are traveling so much and see problems everywhere. And even if we are not traveling, the news show problems severe problems everywhere. So it becomes obvious that none of the so far existing cultures or religions would be able to solve the problems that, ex that exist in nowadays world. And they're longing for wonders. And wonders are, as we know, incidents that happen suddenly, 
from beyond any existing consciousness. No one understands why or how it was possible. People say it is a wonder, but in reality it is just God's consciousness that enters the consciousness of human beings and through its energy it solves problems in a moment. We just have to be ready to perceive it and accept it. I am feeling so extremely peaceful and light just sitting here with you and you know experiencing the silence. Um, I was wondering if for the benefit of our viewers out there, if you could lead us into a meditation or a silence experience that would really help us all. Mm. tiny little spark of supernatural unlimited energy between the two parts of the brain I am receiving as a guest of honor. The one timeless supreme energy of God. It visits me between the two parts of the brain. and gently spreads all its unlimited attainments universally to all souls and all particles of matter. It renews them, replenishes them, with the energy that once was naturally in a completely aware way in this world. I have been, I will be like the one, through the one. I am with the only one. Thank you, sister, for such a wonderful experience. It was amazing. I could feel the difference from before we, when we started the show and the way I feel right now. Thank you so much for being with us. 
Well, today Sister took us into a slightly deeper aspect of silence than what we normally would understand. And uh, this is just the beginning. We are going to experience silence on a much deeper level and understand how to establish a deeper connection with the One, the Supreme. And hopefully this will take away our need to rely on other people to complete us, to fulfill us, once we understand this connection with the One. I hope you've enjoyed this show as much as I have, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for watching.